Welcome to Art Break with the Cape Breton University Art Gallery. In today's episode of our series on painting, we'll be talking about watercolors. Although watercolor paints have been in use since the earliest times, they gained particular prominence in the Renaissance, as we can see here in this example from 1502 of a young hare by Albrecht Dürer. By the 19th century, painters were beginning to use the fluid properties of watercolor to achieve impressionistic effects. Here, the English landscape painter J.M.W. Turner creates the atmosphere of a storm at sea using washes of blue, gray, and violet. In his Seascape DM, James McNeil Whistler reduces the washes even further to allow the viewer to imagine ocean and sky. An attractive aspect of watercolors is their transportability. Generally sold in tubes or in dry form in pans, watercolors can be easily taken outdoors, making them ideal for sketching. For the support, paper is used. Watercolor papers come in a variety of weights, conventionally either cold or hot pressed. Cold pressed paper is identified by its coarse texture, hot pressed by its distinctively flat or smooth surface. The choice is a matter of personal preference. For this demonstration, a cold pressed paper is used. To ensure that the support does not buckle, it should first be stretched by soaking the paper and affixing to a flat board with water-activated gum tape. When dry, the paper will have fully stretched, allowing the painter to then apply watercolors many times over without warping. Watercolor is often regarded as a challenging medium because of the difficulties it presents in correcting errors. But its beauty arguably lies in the possibilities it offers when the painter relinquishes control. Soaking the paper before applying the paint allows for bleeding which can produce surprising results. Painting on a dry surface allows the artist more control over the line while the application of localized water can allow measured control of the bleeding effects and distribution of paint. Alternatives to conventional paint can also be used to stain the paper surface and create washes of color. For this example, steeped tea has been used. The addition of watercolor paint, in this case rose matter, generates a soft peach color when blended with the tea. Further addition of blue with the rose matter produces accents of violet. Experimentation with additional media can also produce interesting results. Here, table salt is sprinkled over the damp surface of the paper to create circular patterns of resistance in the paint. The dried wash reveals the unique and delicate properties of the medium. Subtle shifts in color density along the water lines pleasing irregularities where the salt was applied, and delicate shifts of color enabled by the bleeding action of the water. Dried washes can be layered with other colors, and this can be done repeatedly. For this last demonstration, layers of blue and red will be applied over a ready-made wash to generate an abstract painting one in which the artist intentionally relinquishes a measure of control over the application of paint. To visualize the full effect of the bleeding action in the process, the recorded footage will now be sped up.
The finished result reveals patterns and color blends produced through natural physics in harmony with the painter's choices and actions. The work is unique and can never be truly duplicated. We hope you've enjoyed this third episode of our painting series and will join us again next time on Art Break with the Cape Breton University Art Gallery.